All right, so here in section 4.4, we're going to take the ideas of the sine, cosine, and tangent, and the ratio that they represent, and apply them to any angle. This could be an angle on the unit circle, or this could be an angle that is just on any circle, meaning the radius is not 1. But sine, cosine, and tangent are still applied in the same way for the same ratios. So let's go ahead and take a look at how that happens. All right, so here we have a chart that summarizes everything we need to know for the first quadrant. We have all the degree angles. We have the same angles and radians, the corresponding values for the sine, cosine, and tangent for every angle. And again, this summarizes everything we need to know for the first quadrant. We're going to refer back to this when answering questions about angles in other quadrants. All right, so for this example, we have two questions. First off, what is the reference angle? And secondly, what is the quadrant for the angle negative 330? To find our quadrant, if we draw a unit circle, a positive 330 degrees would start at 0, and we rotate until we got about here. Going the opposite direction, if we just deliver the things, this would be negative 90, and then we have negative 180 negative 270, and finally negative 360. So, if we were to rotate clockwise, we're going to get to about here, to negative 330. Now, in order to figure out what our reference angle is, we want to find this missing distance. So, what's this gap here? How much less than 360 is negative 330? Or, I'm sorry, how much less than negative 360 is negative 330? And the answer is, 30 degrees. So our reference angle is 30 degrees, and we are in the first quadrant for our angle. Knowing that, I could label the triangle and then go through an answer, finding the sine, the cosine, the tangent, or either one of the six trig functions for our angle. All right, so this angle is positive. Again, we're going to try and find the reference angle and the quadrant. So looking at our unit circle, we have 90 degrees, 180, 270 and 360. So we know 225 has to be somewhere between 180 and 270. If we're trying to figure out exactly how much, well, 225 is how much more than 180? And the answer is 45 degrees. So our reference angle is 45 degrees, and we are in the third quadrant for our triangle. All right, 120 degrees. Same questions, reference angle and quadrant. So again, we're going to start with our labeling. So this is 90, 180, and I'm going to go ahead and stop there because 120 is between 90 and 180. The question is, how much? So 120 is how much less than 180? And the correct answer is 60 degrees. So our reference angle is 60, and we are in the second quadrant. Again, we can use this information to label a triangle and help us identify sine, cosine, tangent, or cosecant, secant, and cotangent for the angle. All right, now we are into radians, the fun stuff. Same process, though. We're going to go ahead and draw a circle, and you want to label things in radians. So this is 0, and then we have pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and then all the way around would be a total of 2 pi. So now the question is, where is 5 pi over 3? Well, we know it's bigger than 1, and it turns out that it's a little bit bigger than 1.5, so it's going to be somewhere here. The question again is, how much more? Or, in this case, how much less than 2 pi is 5 pi over 3? And the correct answer is pi over 3. So our reference angle is pi over 3, and our quadrant is the fourth quadrant. All right, one last time. We want to find the reference angle and the quadrant for 11 pi over 6. So we start by drawing our circle, and then we label it. So we have 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. All right, so again, we know our angle is going to be bigger than 3 pi over 2, but less than 2 pi. And the question is, how much less? So when I draw my triangle, how much less than 2 pi is 11 pi over 6? So if I subtract the 2, then I get 11 
sorry, I get pi over 6 as my reference angle. So that's the reference angle. We're in the fourth quadrant. And again, I can use that triangle to help me label and solve for all six trig functions. And occasionally, we deal with angles that are not on the unit circle, that have a radius other than 1. And if that happens, we go through the same process. The sine is still y, the cosine is still x, but now we have to incorporate our radius because occasionally, as I said before, r is not 1. So we have a sine, instead of being just y, is now y over r. A cosine, again, instead of being just x, is x over r. And then for a tangent, since it's just the ratio of sine over cosine, it remains as y over x. The inverse functions are affected the exact same way we flip them. So cosecant is going to be r over y. The secant is going to be r over x. And the cotangent is going to be x over y. So really, the only things that are affected, for the most part, are these four functions here. And again, that's only when the radius is in play, because we don't have a unit circle. OK, here's what those problems are going to look like. I gave you the point, negative 3, 4. And I want you to draw the angle, label the triangle, and then find all six trig functions. Let's go ahead and do that. First thing we're going to do is graph our point. So I have negative 3, 4. And when I draw my triangle, I'm going to draw the hypotenuse going to the origin. And then you always want to draw your side going to the x-axis, either up or down. So here's my triangle. I know because of my point that this value is negative 3 and this value is 4. So my next task is to try and find my hypotenuse, or in this case, find the radius. Using our Pythagorean identity, or formula, you have 4 squared plus negative 3 squared is equal to r squared, which means that the square root of 16 plus 9 is equal to r, which is the square root of 25, so r has to be 5. Now that I know what r is, I could very easily go back and solve for sine, cosine, tangent, or the inverse functions, sorry, reciprocal functions, cosecant, secant, or cotangent. Now here's a similar example. We have the point 5, negative 4. Again, we're going to draw the angle, label the triangle, and if we needed to, we could use that to find all six trig functions. So go ahead and hit pause now and try and draw the triangle and label all the sides. All right, let's, let's see how you guys did. So we have the point 5, negative 4, so we're going to go to the right 5 and down 4. And I'm going to put my point here. Again, our triangle goes from the origin to the point and then to the x-axis. So in this case, we're going to go up. And I have my triangle here. From the point, I know that this distance is 5, and this is going to be negative 4. And now I want to find my r value. So the shortcut here is r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared, which is the square root of 5 squared plus a negative 4 squared, which becomes the square root of uh, 25 plus 16, and that becomes the square root of 41. So now again, if I needed to, I could find the sine, cosine, or tangent, or any of my reciprocal identities. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's find the sine, the cosine, and the tangent. So if I want to find the sine, again, the sine of my angle, and we're going to, our angle's always here at the origin, per se. So the sine of that angle is going to be y over r, so in this case it is negative 4 over the square root of 41. And I'm not going to make you guys go ahead and rationalize this. As long as we get the ratio is correct, we're good for now. Uh, if I wanted to find the cosine, again, the cosine is x over r, so I would get 5 over the square root of 41. And finally, for the tangent, this one's kind of the easiest one, tangent is equal to y over x. So the tangent of my function would be negative 4 over 5. If I wanted to find the reciprocal identities, I could simply just flip these and I would get the other three identities. Okay, so here you have a chart that tries to help identify the range for the angles or the x and y values for every quadrant. So in the first quadrant, we know or notice that your angles are between 0 and pi over 2. 
we also know that x and y are both positive. In the second quadrant, we have the angles between pi over 2 and pi. Uh, we talked about in class the other day that x is negative and y is positive. In our third quadrant, the angles are between pi and 3 pi over 2. x and y are both negative. And finally, in our fourth quadrant, we have the angles between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi. And here, x is positive and y is negative. So if I were to give you any two pieces of information, you should be able to identify what quadrant we're in. And that would help you identify if sine and cosine are positive or negative. So for instance, if I say the angle is between pi over 2 and pi, and I say that y is positive, the only quadrant that's going to happen in is in the second quadrant. OK, let's go ahead and try applying this. So here we have an example of what I was just talking about. Uh, we have something about the sine and the cosine. So the important part here is the fact that the sine is a negative value and the cosine is a positive value. So now the question becomes, where does it happen? In what quadrant is the sine negative and the cosine is positive? And the answer is the fourth quadrant. So I'm going to draw my triangle in the fourth quadrant. And I know that for my sine function, it is equal to y over r. So I can go ahead and label this as 3 and negative radical 5. I can then go through the process of solving for my adjacent side. And once I've done that, I can go back and answer the questions of what is the sine, cosine, and tangent. So let's use the Pythagorean formula to help us find the missing side, x. All right, so we have x squared plus the negative square root of 5 squared equals 3 squared, which means x squared plus 5 is equal to 9 or x squared is equal to 4, which means that x has to equal 2. Okay, now since I know what x is, I can go back and answer my questions. Okay, so the sine we already know. The cosine is x over r. So in this case, the cosine is going to be 2 over 3. And the tangent is always y over x. So our tangent is going to be negative square root of 5 divided by 2. And now we have our three trig functions. All right, your turn. So you're given some information here. We know the sine is equal to 0. And we know our angle has to be between 3 pi over 2 and pi over 2. So try and identify where on the circle this happens and try to draw a triangle. All right, this is kind of a trick question. So being between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 means we're going to be in either the second or the third quadrant because it's kind of a big range. So somewhere here. The only place in that range where the sine equals 0 is here at 180 degrees. And the reason why this is kind of a trick question is we can't draw a triangle for something on the x or the y axis. We have simply a straight line. But we can say that our point is going to be negative 1, comma 0. Uh, in this case, we have no r value. We have just x and y. So for the sine, it's going to be 0. We already know that. The cosine is going to be negative 1. And our tangent is y over x, which means in this case it is 0. All right, there you have it. OK, and our final question for this uh, section, we have that the tangent is negative and the sine is negative. So go ahead and hit pause and think about where that is, try and draw the triangle, and label the sides. OK. So the only place where the tangent is negative and the sine is negative is in the fourth quadrant, which means my triangle is going to be drawn in the fourth quadrant. Since I know what my tangent is, that gives me y over x, which means that this is negative 15, and this is 8. From there, I can plug them into the Pythagorean formula to try and find my missing length, my hypotenuse. So we get 8 squared plus negative 15 squared is equal to r squared. All right, so we get 64 plus 225 is equal to r squared. Adding those together, we get 289. And the square root of that is 17. Now that I have all three sides, I can go back and label my, my trick functions. Uh, the sine is y over r, which is negative 15 over 17. 
the cosine is x over r, which is 8 over 17, and the tangent we already know is negative 15 over 8. So, there you have it. We are done with the section. Go ahead and start the homework and prepare for your test.